Good evening. In January of 2016, my youngest child, who was a freshman in college, informed us via Facebook announcement that he had been struggling with his gender identity since he was in middle school. And in, fa in spite of what we thought, he was in fact a male. At that time, I had very little knowledge of what the word transgender meant. During the months that followed, I worked hard to learn about the things I didn't understand. This came in the form of frequent sessions with my therapist and joining multiple support groups for parents of transgender children on Facebook. I had thought that gender and sexuality were tied together. Instead, what I learned is that they are two distinct aspects of a person's identity. In those early days, I was hyper-focused on how my son's coming out impacted me, how I felt, how I was grieving, and how come I had to learn this information on Facebook instead of for my son. Since that time, I've realized that as the oldest of four brothers, I must have been, who one day dreamed of having a daughter, I must have been putting incredible pressure on my son. I can't imagine how hard it must have been for him to come out to us, how difficult it must have been for him to tell me, the mother who waited such a long time to have a daughter, that her dreams were coming to an end. I can't imagine the pressure he must have felt thinking about it and what he expected the reaction to be. Since that time, I've come to realize the invisible pressure that we put on children through the use of colors and themes we assigned to them beginning at birth. We gave my oldest son a doll to play with when I was pregnant with my youngest to get him used to the idea of having a new baby, and it caused an uproar in my family. Boys can't play with dolls, I was told, but boys can play with dolls, and girls can play with trucks, and children can wear whatever color and style of clothing they choose, and we should allow them the freedom to, ex to express their personality without worrying about what that means. It means that they are kids who are exploring their identity and learning about themselves and their surroundings. Just because a boy wants to wear a dress or paint his nails does not mean that he's a girl or that he wants to be a girl. In the same way that a, it probably just means that he wants to know what it's like to wear a dress or to paint your nails. In the same way that a girl might want to know what it's like to pee standing up or to go swimming with her shirt off. Kids mimic what they see around them and they are curious. Let's not keep our fears and insecurities from allowing them to grow. Here in the Mananoc region, we have some great resources for our LGBTQ plus people, but I believe we need more support for our transgender children and their families. I can't be the only one traveling on this journey. And while I don't know what that support looks like, I challenge you to think about what part you play in it and what the next steps we can take together in forming that support are. Writing is how I've always processed my life. And over the past two and a half years, it is how I've processed what I've been learning and feeling. In April of 2016, as part of a capstone project I was wrapping up for my undergraduate degree, I had to write a 30-page nonfiction story and two supplemental pieces. I would like to read one of those pieces for you now. It is a poem titled, Goodbye, or Is It Hello? You left in the middle of the night while I was sleeping before I had a chance to realize you were gone, or to say goodbye, or to tell you to be careful, as I had a thousand times before, or that I loved you. I loved you from the first time I heard your heartbeat, when I first saw your sweet smile, when I first heard your vibrant laugh. I loved you through sleepless nights when you would cry, then I would cry, and eventually the two of us would sleep, your head tucked next to my heart. I loved you 
When you took a dare and kissed that boy on the playground, when you first stood on a stage and shared your heart with a theater full of people, when you first learned that food was the enemy and your life would hinge on a needle you had to plunge deep into your leg. I loved you over plates of mac and cheese and through sappy movies that made us roll our eyes. When you pushed my buttons and tested your limits, pushing me further and further away, yet my love for you knew no bounds. I loved you when you hated yourself and you hated me and you weren't sure which direction your life was headed, but you knew that your dreams were bigger than my plans your life was going to matter. I loved you right up until the moment that you disappeared, like a star that had lost its shine, gone forever. And yet, here you are, right in front of me, a brave young man full of hopes and dreams, ready to stand up for what you deem right and just, and say to the world, I am not who you tell me I should be because I do not fit into your perfect little mold. I am the person I have fought to become, a better version of myself, because I am no longer afraid to let my light shine. I love you for teaching me that goodbyes are not forever and that sometimes the very things we are searching for are right before our eyes if we only open them wide enough to see. I love you. With your short hair and dapper new glasses, as you define a new style for yourself and determine what length shorts you will wear while discussing the merits of pockets in men's jeans. I love you for showing me that strength is sometimes fragile and that we can pack away the memories of the past but who we are is fundamentally the same. Identity transcends physical boundaries. I love you for reminding me that love is stronger than grief, and there's nothing that can't be fixed with a plate of mac and cheese and a marathon of sappy movies and maybe hot chocolate. I love you for stepping outside of yourself when it wasn't comfortable for challenging the status quo of today, while working towards a bright and shining future, for letting me tell you to be careful a thousand more times, because I love you. Thank you and good night.